All right, so currently reporting from Anaheim, and this behind me is one of the city's best attractions, Angel Stadium. Okay, so I don't know much about baseball, admittedly. Uh, I think I've been to one game in my entire life and I must have been maybe 13 years old. But one thing I do know about sports is that sometimes things go really well, sometimes they go really poorly, and uh, those results are not always expected. And the same could be said about poker. As for me lately, things have been going very well, uh, almost too well if I'm being honest. But you guys know how it goes. Things will go really well, then really poorly, and it's the constant back and forth that makes us love this game so much. However, today I am sharing one of the positive sides of my story, which is another good session I had at Hustler Casino Live last week. In case you guys didn't know, maybe you're new to the channel, if so, welcome. I've been on a ridiculous run since the start of the year. I'm expecting it to end at some point, of course, but until then, I'm more than enjoying it. And today we're gonna go over a session that was 5-5 with a $100 ante. Quite a big game, nothing too crazy, but still multiple tens of thousands of dollars on the line. I'll be hosting a private game every Sunday at Hustler, 2 p.m. It's 25.50. Uh, tomorrow is gonna be the second one of those, and they've been a blast. So uh, if anyone out there wants to join, shoot me a message on Instagram, maybe give me a brief background of yourself, and we'll take it from there. I'm trying to give new people a shot every Sunday, but uh, yeah, that's the only thing you need to know today. With all that talking out of the way, let's get into some poker hands. All right, everyone, here we are back again to share some poker hands. Today we're playing 5-5 five, five with 100 ante. I sit with $100,000, and in the first interesting one, there's a $200 straddle. Christian opens from middle position to 500, and a bunch of people call, including myself, with king-queen offsuit. Worth noting that squeezing with these cards is probably okay from time to time, but this time I just call and we go multi-way to a flop, which instantly makes me regret not raising pre-flop as it comes king-king three with two diamonds. So we've got three of a kind with a backdoor flush draw and most likely the best hand. Action checks to Christian who continues with a bet of $500. Folds back around to me and even though, like I said, I most likely have the winning hand, not really sure if I would have a whole lot of bluffs in this situation, so I decided to just call and Mars gets out of the way. Heads up to a turn, which is the six of clubs. I check again, this time Christian checks back, and we go to a river, which is not my favorite, the five of diamonds bringing in a possible flush. I check, and now it's back on Christian. He puts in a bet of $1,900, which is not too big compared to the size of the pot. Of course, I'm not gonna be folding. It's a question of whether I wanna turn my hand into a bluff or just call. And considering that my hand is pretty good and I think Christian could be bluffing sometimes or even value betting a worse hand like pocket jacks, for example, I decided to just call, knowing sometimes we'll be up against a flush but could be winning often enough as well. Unfortunately, this is not one of those times as Christian wins with 10-6 of diamonds. In the next one, there's another $200 straddle. Francisco limps in, Tal limps in from the small blind and I'm looking down at ace-jack in the big blind. Pretty good cards, so I raise it up to 1200 and they both make the call, so we're gonna go three ways to this flop, which is not bad. Ace, king, five, we've got top pair, although there is a flush draw out there, so things could get a little dicey. Tal checks, and I continue with a bet of $1,300. I think checking is also worthwhile, but this time I do bet. Francisco does not call, instead he raises. All the way up to 4,500. And even though there are some draws available, like straight draws and flush draws, this is already concerning because he's raising someone who's shown aggression so far, that's me, and he's got a player to act behind him, Tall, who could easily have some stuff on this board as well. So even though Tall folds when it gets back to me, I'm already not feeling great about it. But like I said, he could have some flush draws and straight draws, so I call. Turn shouldn't change anything, it's the eight of hearts. I check and now he bets $8,000. Pretty big bet, but like I said on the flop, we're still beating all his bluffs, so I call yet again. And we're off to a river which is not good. It's the king of clubs, so now we're not beating any flush draws. I check again and now he goes all in for his remaining 20,000 or so dollars. 
And at this point, I don't think we beat anything aside from random air balls. And if he's got one of those, more power to him. So I fold pretty quickly. Turns out we were in trouble against pocket fives all along. So what I thought was a bad river card maybe got me out of some trouble. Shortly after, this one goes down where Christian opens to 200. Will calls and I'm looking down at 7-5 suited on the button. I think all three options are fine here. This time I choose the aggressive route. Raise it up to $900. It's good to do this with these sorts of hands once in a while just to remain unpredictable when we raise with aces and kings and, you know, the good stuff. Christian calls, Will also calls. So three of us going to a flop, which comes not that bad for 7-5 suited. Jack 4-3 with a club. So we've got a straight draw and a very optimistic flush draw as well. When the action checks to me, I don't think anyone should be too strong on this board. So I continue betting $2,000. Christian calls, which considering there's a player left to act behind him, is pretty strong, or at least strong enough to continue once. Will gets out of the way, so we're going heads up to a turn, which shouldn't really change anything. It's the eight of spades. Essentially just a brick. Christian checks again, and unless he's got a set, which I expect he'll check raise on the flop sometimes, we should be up against a one pair holding. At best, he's got a jack, and even at that, I don't think he would love facing some continued aggression. Since I raised pre-flop, I could easily have over pairs, pocket jacks, ace jack, you know, all sorts of powerful holdings. So I decided to continue applying pressure. If I had a strong hand, I would bet pretty big. So with seven high, I'm gonna do the same thing. I put in a bet of $9,000, and Christian releases his Jack-10 suited right away. So a very nice result. And with that, we move to what I think is one of the most interesting hands of the night. Here we go. There's two calls. That's right. Limping in for $5 is allowed. Will disagrees and raises it up to 200. And I'm looking down in late position at ace-queen suited. Very good cards. So I'm going to make a raise to $700. Nick Colt calls the 700 from the small blind. When it gets back to Will, he is still not happy with the price. Instead, he raises it up again, this time to $2,100. I've got a big suited ace in position, so I'm going nowhere. I make the call. Nick does not. Instead, he gets out of the way. So we're going heads up to a flop, which is... Eh, mixed feelings, I guess. 10, 8, 7 with one spade. Of course, I have absolutely nothing, but if there's anyone this board should favor, it's for sure me and not Will, since, you know, he put in all that money pre-flop. He's probably not going to connect with these cards too often. That being said, he does put in a bet of $1,400. We've got some backdoor possibilities, as well as, let's be honest, potential to win this hand by bluffing later on if need be. So I call, and we see a 10 on the turn, pairing the top card. As if the flop wasn't bad enough, this turn is even worse for Will, so it's no surprise he finally checks. Time to decide whether I want to turn this ace-queen into a bluff, or get to showdown in hopes that I have the best hand. Well, if I'm being honest, I do think Will is capable of having some pre-flop shenanigans going on, such as king-jack, ace-jack, small-suited aces, maybe king-queen. You know, hands that get a little frisky, but technically we are still beating. Also, if he's got any overpair that plays this way, which I think he certainly could, we're not going to get him to fold those hands. So after thinking about all that stuff, I decide to check it back and see what happens on the river. The five of clubs shouldn't really change anything. I guess the only consideration is that maybe he has a hand like ace five suited and now improves to the best hand, but I don't really think that's too likely. Now this is where the hand gets interesting as Will thinks for a while and decides to bet $4,200, around half the size of the pot. Action's back on me, and now we are in a very close decision, I think. Like I said on the turn, I believe he could certainly have some air balls like king highs, maybe even queen highs, worse ace highs, etc. that have no way of winning aside from trying to bluff. Of course, we are beating those hands, so calling seems like a good option, but he could very well be going for value with a hand like pocket jacks, pocket queens, kings, aces, maybe even ace eight suited, pocket nines, you know, these sorts of hands that are not super strong, but he thinks are the best hand and is going to try to target a worse holding from me. So yeah, not an easy decision at all. But we are getting a good price, and I do think he's capable of having some bluffs in this spot. So after a few minutes of thinking it over, I do decide to call. Curiosity gets the best of me, and I think we could be winning sometimes at least. And I'm happy to hear Will say, good call, you got it. Always a good feeling to win with ace high, and we take down a $16,000 pot. A few rounds later, this one comes up where I get pocket kings in early position. I raise it to 200, but when it gets back to Francisco in the big blind, he makes it 1200. 
quite a big raise, all things considered. Now it's on me, and of course I'm going nowhere. It's a question of whether I want to raise again or call in position. I'll be the first to say with Pocket Kings, re-raising again is usually never a bad idea, but I do think there's merit to occasionally slow playing, especially if you're in position, and also if you're up against an opponent who's capable of bluffing and showing a lot of aggression post-flop, which I do think Francisco has in him. So, most of the time, a raise I think is best. This time, I decide to get sneaky and just call, and we go to a flop of Queen 8-3 with two spades. Pretty innocent board, unless of course we were up against pocket queens, for example, but not going to be scared of monsters under the bed. Francisco bets $2,100. I'm going nowhere. I call. Turn card is the five of diamonds. Shouldn't change a thing. This time Francisco checks, which to me seems like he's just giving up. I don't really feel like there's a lot of value in betting. Most likely if he had a strong hand that we could get some value from, he would have just continued betting himself. So I decided to feed him some rope and check it back and hope that whatever he's got is going to try bluffing on the river. And what do you know, we get a delicious river card, the king of diamonds. Not only is it great because, of course, we river the nuts and top set, but I think it's a card that Francisco will try stabbing on with any sort of holding he's got, like ace-jack, ace-ten, you know, all that kind of stuff. Seems like Francisco agrees because after a few seconds, he bets $4,000. Like I said, I think he's most likely bluffing, mostly because I can account for all the kings in the deck, or at least 75% of them. As you guys can see, I was dead wrong as Francisco's actually got a super strong hand and rivered the last remaining king with his ace-king offsuit. But as I mentioned, I think he's most likely bluffing. However, the small amount of times that he's not bluffing, I think he's gonna have a very strong holding, such as pocket queens, maybe ace-king, most likely aces, and all those holdings are probably gonna call quite a big raise. So I decide on a big size, of $25,000. Maybe a little bit too much if I'm being honest. This is kind of a silly comment to make, but I grabbed five chocolate chips, the uh, 5Ks, and I initially wanted to only grab four of them, but I feel like grabbing a lot of chips and then putting some back looks really strong. So I just went with it, five chips into the middle. Francisco does not snap fold, which is really surprising to me in the moment. Like I said, I thought most likely he didn't have anything and it starts to dawn on me at this point that Francisco actually has got a strong hand. That's always good news when you've got the nuts and you're raising for value. But after a few minutes, he ends up completely owning me and letting go of his ace-king for rivered top pair. I think that's a ridiculously tight fold. But he was right, so what do I know about poker? Very nice play from him, and we don't win nearly as much as we should have. If I'm being totally honest, I'm not in love with the way I played this one, but that's how it goes. This next hand is not nearly as complicated. I open with pocket eights, Yen re-raises in late position, Francisco cold calls in the small blind, and I call as well, trying to flop a set. That's what happens, king eight five with two hearts. Little did I know that Yen flopped an open-ended straight draw as well as a flush draw, so this is what you would call an action flop for sure. Checks to Yen, she continues with a bet of $1,200. Francisco calls in the small blind with his bluff catcher at this point. I will be doing nothing of the sort. Instead, I raise right away to $6,000. Could easily be doing this with all sorts of bluffs, so doing it with middle set seems completely logical. Now it's back on Yen, and she decides that all of her remaining $20,000 are going into the middle. Francisco folds, and of course, I call. As you guys can see, equities are a bit close here, two to one. When Yen asks to run it twice, I happily oblige. Usually just glad to let the other person decide. First board runs out clean for us, offsuit seven, offsuit queen. Second board, offsuit queen, and an offsuit 10 on the river. We end up holding against a huge combo draw and take down a $46,000 pot. Nice. At this point, I pick up nothing playable for about an hour until this hand comes up where Nick opens from early position to $300 and it folds to me in the small blind with ace nine of diamonds. After being quiet for quite some time and showing good hands at showdown, I think my image is pretty good so I decide to re-raise. Calling seems fine as well but this time I make it $1,500 to go and Nick calls in position so we go heads up to a flop of king six five with one diamond. Not the best flop for me, but we can represent some stuff, especially on good turn cards. So I start with a small bet, just like if I did have something good. Nick is not interested in folding. He calls and we go to a turn, which is interesting. It's the seven of diamonds, giving me a straight draw and the nut flush draw. But at the same time, it's a much better card for him than it is for me. And what I mean by that is he'll have hands like two pair, sets, 
maybe the occasional stray even. And I really wouldn't interact with this card too well. So because of that, I check it over to him. He does not check back. He bets $3,000, giving me a pretty good price to call and just try to improve. If we don't, it's going to be straightforward, check and fold on the river. And that's what happens. Three of hearts changes nothing, at least for me. I check again. He puts in a bet of like 8000 bucks, and I fold right away. Always sucks to miss nice draws like those. Let's see if we can fix that in this next hand where there's an open to 200. I re-raise in middle position to 700 with 6-5 suited. Calling probably also okay, but like I said earlier, it's nice to disguise things when you've got aces and kings. Sometimes I've got six high, sometimes, you know, you get the idea. Remain unpredictable and all that. Mars cold calls and will calls as well. So we go three ways to a flop, which is a very interesting one. Jack, three, deuce. So we've got a combo draw once again, a straight draw and a flush draw. But as you guys can see, both of my opponents also have some stuff going on. Will's flopped bottom pair and a better flush draw. Mars, I guess he just has a gut shot, but for Mars, that's a huge draw. Will checks. I continue with a bet of $1,400. Mars gets out of the way, and now Will check raises to 5,000. In the moment, I thought we could be up against some sets or flush draws. Flush draws, of course, would be bad news since most of them would be bigger than mine, if not all of them. Actually, is there even a smaller flush draw possible? Yeah, I guess there is. Four deuce of clubs. But aside from that, we're probably in some trouble if he's got clubs. That being said, we're in position, and we've got a lot of stuff going on. So I decide to call, but treading with caution until an offsuit four hits on the turn. That is a miracle turn card if I've ever seen one. Even better news is that Will continues betting, this time $10,000. And now we have a question between jamming all in since he's only got around 26 left or calling in position. And I do think that just calling is the play because if he does have a flush draw, we allow him to bluff all in on the river. And if he's got a set or something like that, the money's going in anyway, also on the river. So I call in position and we see an offsuit seven on the river. We still have the best possible hand. Couldn't really ask for a better river than that. And I'm happy to see Will does not check. However, he ends up betting only $15,000, which I found interesting. I assumed he would just shove all in if he was gonna bet, but doesn't make too much difference in terms of my decision. Of course, I've got the nuts. It's not rocket science. I shove all in and Will folds right away with his bottom pair. So we actually run very hot in this hand. We were in pretty bad shape on the flop until that turn saved the day. And with that, we move to the last fun hand of the night, at least for myself. There's a race to $200 from Pepe. Will calls on the button, and I'm looking down at King-Queen offsuit in the small blind. Like I said at the very first hand of this video, King-Queen offsuit, it's okay to call, it's okay to raise. This time, I don't call, I raise it up. 1200 to go. Mars cold calls in the big blind with ace-10 suited. Pepe calls as well, so already a good amount of money in the pot. And now it's back on Will on the button who decides he's had enough. He's got pocket sixes, and he's ready to gamble for all of it. All in for $10,000. Decision's back on me now, and my king-queen offsuit is not looking great. But Will's had a rough day, and I feel like giving some maybe lighter than normal action. It would suck to be up against some sort of ace high that he just decides to shove all in with, but what I think is most likely is he's got some sort of pocket pair, just like the one he has here, and you know, it's a flip. What's wrong with that, especially with some dead money in there? So instead of letting it go, I decide to re-raise again. What I think would be the worst option is calling and giving Mars and Pepe a good price to continue as well. King-Queen is probably going to shrivel up four ways, but... Heads up, I'm okay with it, especially against what I perceive to be an under pair. So I squeeze yet again, I make it $18,000 to go. Mars and Pepe do get out of the way and we go to a run out, all in pre-flop, 50-50. Will asks to run it just once, I happily oblige, and what do you know, he flops a set, so we're in very bad shape, but we do have some backdoor possibilities which arrives on the three of hearts. Any heart would now give me the winning hand, except the 10 of hearts, of course. But it was not meant to be. Offsuit ace on the river and Will wins a big pot off of me. Nice hand, Will. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the last noteworthy hand for myself. As always, I hope you all enjoyed the hands. Right, so as you guys saw, 
things went very well for me on this particular Thursday. I ended up winning around $42,000 in about six hours of play, which of course was an amazing result. That goes without saying pretty much. But yeah, like I said at the start of the video, uh, this month has been ridiculous. I've never won so much in a single month in my entire life. And uh, like I said, that downswing is gonna be brutal and I'll probably be saying the same thing except it'll be how much I lost for the month. But yeah, uh, for now I'm gonna try to stay positive and enjoy it while it lasts. Don't forget about that 2550 invitation. If you guys are interested, contact me on Instagram. That's all I got for today, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for the support and I'll see you all next time. Peace.